Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. All right, so um, we're gonna do some more wines here, back to wines. And uh, so the first wine we're gonna do is uh, a Pinot Grigio from Mezza Corona. Now, if you remember a few episodes back, I did a Pinot Grigio uh, from Mezza Corona. And so they saw that I did that, and they reached out to me to ask if I would like to do a review of their Pinot Grigio. And I said, sure. So we finally got the wine in recently, and uh, so I can make sure I'm doing wines that were sent to me first versus wines that I've purchased. Um, I want to go ahead and get this done so that that way, you know, they don't feel like I'm, you know, they, they don't feel like it's been, is it getting darker in here? I know the light outside is, but these lights hopefully are compensating for everything. Um, anyway, the, uh, so just to make sure that I'm getting these, these wines out here. So, um, I'm not going to go through the whole history of Mezza Corona, but they are from Italy. Um, they are one of the largest uh, wineries in Italy, and they produce, you know, a lot of wines. But this is, you know, a wine that is a value wine. Um, it is approximately seven dollars a bottle retail out there. Um, so this is from the Vignette delle Dolomiti IGT. Um, yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't butcher it right. Anyway. Um, so Alto Dije is the area that this is from. This is the 2013 Pinot Grigio. It has Dolomiti on, underneath it. As in the Dolomites, okay, for mountains, too, if you want me to translate what that is. It says a state grown. So this is their own vineyards. They didn't contract out. Um, and let's see here. Blah, 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 blah. Since 1904, by the way, they've been doing this for, just to refresh people's memories. Now, I'll... Before I even have any of this, we're going to talk about Pinot Grigio for a second. Okay, so Pinot Grigio and Pinot Gris are the exact same grape. Uh, it's just that Pinot Gris is what's, what you get from wines out of Alsace, and Pinot Grigio is the wine you get out of Italy. Now, outside of those two countries, it doesn't matter, um, doesn't matter what they want to call it. They can call it Pinot Gris or Pinot Grigio. In my experience, I'm going to say this is a hard and fast rule, in my experience, if somebody labels their wine Pinot Grigio, and it's not from Italy, they are still trying to emulate an Italian style. If they label it Pinot Gris, then they're trying to emulate an Alsatian style. Again, not a hard and fast rule, but that's kind of what they're looking for, all right? Also, I do harp on Pinot Grigio quite a bit. Now, I don't harp on Pinot Gris, which is kind of interesting. Um, I feel that Pinot Gris has a little more flavor than Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio is extremely light. It's, it can be very light and very refreshing wine. But as a master sommelier, who I will not name, uh, said one time during a conference, Pinot Grigio is like the Coors Light of wine. It tastes like nothing, okay? So we're gonna get that out of the way first. And I just like the line, I think it's funny. I know it harps on Pinot Grigio and Mezzacrone. I'm not trying to harp on your wine at all, but I just want to get it out there that I do have a little bit of a bias that I'm not a fan of Pinot Grigio in general. It doesn't mean I've had any, doesn't mean I haven't had good Pinot Grigios. I have, but they're usually a surprise to me because I usually walk into it going, uh, it's going to taste like lemons. It's going to taste like, you know, uh, uh, carbonated lemon juice is pretty much what I get from most Pinot Grigios. I have been surprised in the past though, just so you know. All right. So let's hope that this surprises me. I'll give you an honest, honest, you know, review of this. If I don't like it, I'll tell you I don't like it. I'm not going to be happy if I don't like it because I don't like telling people I don't like their product. But when I did my uh, blind tasting last night at Max's, and I'm recording this again on July 4th, so I was there last night after work. Uh, one of the wines they had, I said, I, I told the bartender, I was like, so um, this wine is 
you know, it's either an Australian Shiraz or it's a California Cab, but either way, it tastes like the bottle's been open about four days, maybe five days. It's this, blah, blah, blah. And I said, and it's really bad. Like it's like it's bad wine. And they go, well, we actually opened it today and it's like an $80 bottle. Whew. Yeah, $80 restaurant price, not $80 retail. All right, so yeah, the lights look like they're dimming a little bit. So between, between these two wines, I'm gonna increase, uh, that light just went out. So um, we'll get through this and then I'll go ahead and relight. Anyway, so let's get through it. All right, so on the nose. I don't know, it's just the typical citrus type of aromas. Nose is a little clogged up, but not too much. Yeah, just the typical, the typical citrusy type of stuff. But I do get kind of a melon, melon type of uh, aroma. They talk about honeysuckle in here, so probably it's more of a that that floral aroma. But other than that, I don't get. Any, I really don't get too much else. I mean, no evidence of wood. You know, probably stainless steel. I'm sure it's stainless steel uh, fermentation and uh, storage. But nothing out of the ordinary for Pinot Grigio. On the palate, um, acid, you know, pretty medium plus to high acid on, on, the, on the palate. Um, very clean, very fresh. Um, definitely tons of lemon. Tons of lemon and lime on it. Um, I don't get, I get maybe that hint of honeysuckle, but it's very, very subtle. Or, and, and I want to say honey, but very, very, I guess, melon or honeydew melon type of uh, flavor. It's very subtle. Maybe even a bit of peach, but it's it's not it's not overwhelming. It really does taste like most Pinot Grigios I've had. It's seven dollars. Okay, we're not talking a twenty or there there. I don't think there really are any thirty dollar Pinot Grigios out in the market. But we're not talking premium pre Pinot Grigio. Um, it's seven bucks. It is refreshing. I'm not I'm not going to discount that it's not refreshing. I mean, it's hot. It's hot out there. The lights are. It's kind of hot with the lights on. Um, you know, I have LEDs here, so they don't produce any heat, but these are tungsten halogen lights or whatever, and they, they I get a little bit of heat from them. And it's refreshing. You know, this is something where I'm like, like you know what? Sorry to say, Ms. Corona, but it tastes like pretty much every other Pinot Grigio for the price range. So it's, it's, not, I'm not gonna, it's not any better or any worse. Okay, so let's put it that way. It tastes pretty much like Pinot Grigio. Um, it's something that I wouldn't think about too much. I would be drinking it just as a refreshing beverage. Um, <clears throat> it's hot outside or just if I'm going to pair it with food, um, it's going to pair just as like any other Pinot Grigio. It's going to pair just as well with any other type of seafood type of thing or <clears throat> pastas with, with, uh, with uh, like cream type sauces, white sauces, um, uh, salads. I, I'm, yeah, I, I can see doing Pinot Grigio with a salad. I tend to do other wines with it, but, um, you know, I can see doing this with a nice crisp salad, all that kind of stuff. So the food-wise, it would work, no matter what. It would work with the food. Um, if you see it in the store and you're trying to decide, if you're really just trying to decide between Mezzacrona and some other ones that are in the price range, Mezzacrona at least is a well-known brand um, versus maybe something that isn't as well-known or if it was something that was cheaper, um, I would probably go with the Mezzacrona. Um, if I was going for something a little bit more, a little bit higher on, than, than this particular label, I might, I might go with that. But just as a, you know, it's Pinot Grigios are, are, for me are nice at the right times, but are not a wine that I go and just go, my goodness, I've got to have it. I'll be honest, the, the white wines that I tend to gravitate towards um, are different. However, Sauvignon Blancs are, are kind of similar to Pinot Grigio in some of their flavor profiles. Um, but I tend to like them a little bit more. All right, let's move on to the next wine and let's get some lighting fixed here too. 
All right, so now we're gonna move on to wine number two. Now, this wine is the most recent wine to my portfolio. <clears throat> Got this for free, by the way, by dad, dad brought. Dad brought it back from his trip to California. So, this is the, who's gonna hop right into it? This is the Hotel del Coronado, uh, Calif uh, California Cabernet Sauvignon. It is cellared and bottled by the Ruth Rutherford Wine Company. Um, I don't think there's vintage on it, is there? Non-vintage. Okay, so um, let's kind of talk about this wine. So dad visited uh, the hotel. They sell this wine for $21. Just on the back label here. $21 for the, for the wine. And um, it's a wine that they, I guess, you know, they have packaged and, and created for them by the Rutherford Wine Company. Now, Rutherford Wine Company is a very big wine company in California. Um, if I remember correctly, I've had other wine from them that was repackaged for somebody else. Similar, similar idea. Um, but let's talk about the hotel real quick. So I looked it up. Hotel's pretty nice. This big hotel, pretty nice. It's been, it was founded in 1888. It is in Coronado, California, which is just west of San Diego on the coast. Um, it's on the beach and uh, pretty nice. They, you know, of course, like every, ho every like nice hotel like that, they, you know, they have, you know, all kinds of events you can do there and weddings and receptions and conferences and blah, 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 blah. Um, rooms look pretty nice. Anywhere from $300 to $1,900 a night. So this is not, you know, Motel 6, okay? Anyway, that's all I got on the hotel. I'm not going to go through the whole history of the hotel. But anyway, so it's Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, oh, also, what, what I, from what I understand, uh, where I read some reviews about it, um, is that you get a bottle of this in your room when you book a room. So they, they give you a bottle for free. Seems like a good thing. $300 a night, get a $20, $20 bottle of wine for the deal. Sounds good. All right, so um, <clears throat> let's get right into it. All right, has fairly typical cab characteristics. I can actually smell uh, the bell pepper on it. Red fruits, you know, kind of the darker red fruit variety. Um, raspberry. A bit woodsy. And initially I thought I got some caramel off of it, but I'm not really getting that so much right now. It, it kind of burns the nostril, so the alcohol might be a little high. I don't know. I don't remember it being that high. It's got to be on here somewhere. 12 and a half. Yeah, I didn't think it was very high. Which really for a California cab, that's, that's kind of low. They seem to love that 14 to... 14.5% on their, on their wines. You know, a little smoky too. Almost smoke bomb, which that's usually not what you want, but, you know, because that gives you sulfur content, but a little smoky. Yeah, now that I'm really, you know, almost, almost smoke bomb, but not quite. So nothing really bad, just it's kind of subtle. On the palate, well, hey, the sun came out. I don't know if that made it brighter in here. I think it did. Um, on the palate, you know, it's got that raspberry flavor. Um, tannins are about medium plus. Um, I get a little bit of caramel to it. Um, acid is pretty high, actually. It's, it's, I would say medium plus on the acid. Um, it's not too hot, but I feels like I, I can really kind of feel the alcohol. So it doesn't seem like it's as balanced as it should be for 12.5% alcohol. I would really think it was closer to 14. Um, yeah, really caramelly. Um, I don't get any of that smoke bomb or anything like that on, on the palate, so that's good. A little bit of the pepper. Um, 
And it's not even just the, the bell pepper, but I get actually more of the like black pepper, spice type of pepper on it. You know, it's not bad. It, it drinks pretty much like a $20 bottle of California generic cab should taste like. Um, but that's kind of the high end of it. I would probably in general think of this more as a $15 or maybe even a $12 bottle of cab. But at 20 bucks, if you had this, if you, well, so, you know, hotel prices are expensive anyway, this would probably retail for around 12 to 15 normally. Um, you know, there's even like a, like a popcorn, buttered popcorn flavor to it. I don't, personally get that a lot from cabs. It does happen, so there's definitely lots of oat treatment to it. Um, but it, it's not, doesn't, doesn't detract from the wine really that much. It's not bad. You know, it's, it's pretty decent. Um, if this was retail, $20, I'd tell you, go ahead and buy it if you want, but I would, I would tell you to probably try to find it for about five bucks cheaper. <clears throat> if it's part of your room package, definitely. Okay, I mean, this is a good enough bottle of wine that's free that you feel like you're getting a good value and you're not getting some $5 knockoff wine. It doesn't, but at the same time, it doesn't seem to be as stereotypical of, say, a Napa or Sonoma cab. It doesn't have the really big bombastic uh, fruit uh, and cedar and all that type of stuff. It, it, it's not. It's not as... And it's not loaded with pepper, which not all California cabs or cabs in general have to have that bell pepper. They do not have to have it, but if they do, that's usually an indicator of cab. It, it's not a bad wine. Like I said, you're probably not gonna find this retail anywhere. You probably can find the exact same wine by Rutherford somewhere else, and it's probably 12 to $15. Um, being a hotel is probably, that's why it's 21 bucks is, you know, upcharge because they got to pay for everything, you know? Um, so it's not a bad wine. Like I said, if you're going to be at the hotel and you want to buy a bottle to, to remember your visit, um, buy it. It'll, if nothing else, it'll probably, it may not taste as good as that bottle that you had in the room because, you know, we walked into the room, it was like, Oh, I got a free bottle of wine and I'm really a nice hotel. And then you get home, you might be like, oh, it's still pretty good, but it's gonna give you those memories of your hotel visit. Or hopefully they were, it was a good visit. Um, so yeah, uh, if, if, you're, if you're able to buy it though for 12 to $15, I'd definitely say it's a wine that you would probably wanna get just for the value is, is pretty decent. All right, that's gonna do it. Um, this, I recorded two episodes today, so I have no idea from the last episode to this one, what happens with has happened with my iTunes account or the iTunes feed or in general, TiVo should be still working. Um, so no update on any of that type of stuff, but make sure you visit the website because that's where you can see all the back catalog and it's all nice and ordered. Uh, be sure to catch me out on the Roku channel, on Roku, on the iWine.tv channel. You can also find me on YouTube there. You can find me on YouTube on any app, any device as YouTube, you can find me there. So if you're wanting to do, do the couch thing, you don't have a TiVo, then use that. Uh, Apple TV, Xbox, PS4, Xbox 360, PS3, you know, oh, does PS3 have a YouTube channel? I don't know, but the other, but the others do. Um, Google Chrome, Chromecast, whatever, you know, all that kind of stuff. You can find me on YouTube. You can always go to the website, uh, check me out there, and uh, that's gonna do it. Oh yeah, friend me up above. Click the links below for the information about the wines. Um, hit the donate button over here uh, to give me a little donations. And uh, that's going to do it. Thank you, everybody. We'll see everyone again next time. <laughs>